Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a bit of an anti-haul, a bit of a rant, a bit of a collection of wisdom and advice for those of us who can sometimes have a bit of a spending problem during this trying time that is the Sephora VIB, Rouge VIB, and Beauty Insider sale, the fall sale, if you will. I know that there's a lot of stuff going on in the beauty community that I wanted to address having to do with consumerism and kind of voting with your dollar. So I wanted to kind of like segment this video into like parts because I feel like all of this has to do with like an anti-haul. Things that you're not gonna spend money on and things that you're not going to put your coin towards. And uh, I felt like making this one a little bit different. A, because there's too much shit going on to not address it and B, it's a VIB sale and girl needs clicks. <laughs> so, you know. So the first part of the video is gonna be more like a traditional anti-haul where I found a bunch of products at Sephora that have been just like marketed at me. I've seen in videos and I've seen in like the new releases thing. And I'm just like, I don't need this. I don't want this. I don't wanna spend money on it. And it's something that you don't necessarily need to buy either because of one reason or another. So I have my, um, my shopping cart. I, I use this as a way of keeping track <laughs> because I like seeing how much all of this is going to cost specifically. So my current shopping cart is uh, $983. Obviously I'm not spending money on those things, but puts it in perspective, okay? So the first thing I'm not gonna buy from Sephora is pretty much any palette from Natasha Denona because they're way overpriced. Like they're so overpriced. The green brown palette is $239. Why does anybody need a palette, let alone over $100, but over $200? of just greens and browns. The Tropic palette is $129. It's just all of the palettes that Natasha Denona puts out are so ridiculously overpriced because they come up with this like weird sense of like, oh, you're getting so much product because the eyeshadows are huge. But like, are you gonna use up all the eyeshadows? No, like for a regular consumer, you do not need that sheer amount of product. You're, you're not gonna use that shit. Like don't spend that much money. And especially don't necessarily spend that much money during the sale because it's still so overpriced. Like it's so expensive. I'm not gonna do it. It's just, it's fucking dumb. It's fucking dumb and I don't need it and I'm not gonna buy it. Next, on the list of things that are way too fucking expensive for what they are, I've seen this brand SK2 go around and I believe it's a Korean brand. Korean skincare, I will put it out there, dope. Like every piece of Korean skincare I've ever tried, I've loved, my skin has loved it. I don't know if it's the fact that I'm like dry and pale and I want like all the moisture. It works for me. This like Gen Optics, uh, what is it? Aura Essence Serum. It's a serum that's for um, brightening, it helps with dull, dullness, dark spots, uneven skin tone. It's got like amino acids and organic acids and stuff, but like, okay. I could see like, if you wanna be like a bougie ass bitch, spend like $80 on a piece of skincare. I won't do it, but like, if you wanna spend money on it, go right ahead. This fucking serum is 1.6 ounces and it's $240. I am disgusted. What? Excuse you? Where on God's green earth are you getting that price tag from? 1.6 ounces is like one and a half sizes of like a standard foundation. 1.6 ounces isn't even like the normal size of like a small lush pot. Like a small lush pot is like 3.3 ounces. What? What? <laughs> no. No. I don't need it. I'm not gonna buy it. You don't need to buy it. For skincare, kind of specifically during the sale, I think skincare is a hard line to balance because on one hand, you wanna spend more money on skincare than you do on makeup generally. Skincare is also something that you are going to eventually run out of and something that you are going to need to restock. So if you're gonna buy something that is so exorbitantly expensive during the sale that you would never spend full price on, why buy it during the sale? Like why buy something that's $240 when you can get 20% off that if if you like it and then afterwards you want to repurchase it, you feel guilty about it, you know? It's a weird dichotomy and I don't like it. One thing that I'm also not going to buy, uh, the fucking Beauty Blender Foundation. Oh hell no! This is on a completely different tangent, but Beauty Blender, what? You done fucked up. You done fucked up. What? Who? Huh? This is... They released 32 shades. They released enough shades for it to have been like, a decent shade range. 
And I know that I get some comments from people being like, why are you hating on brands that only focus on fair skin tones? You're fair. Like, why are you hating on brands because they don't focus on dark? Now this brand uh, didn't focus on either of us. <laughs> they specifically focused on tan people, which I feel like there's a multitude of brands and a multitude of shades that you can find that are tan and that are medium and that are like light medium. It's the fair and the deep dark that get the short end of the stick all the time. Beauty Blender, why? Like I don't use the sponge and I'm not gonna use the foundation. Okay, cool. Quick tangent about fair skin tones too, while it's it's it pales in comparison Hey. <laughs> to the very limited selection that people of deep skin have. I wanted to try out that new Too Faced Born This Way uh, concealer thing, the full coverage, super coverage concealer. And I went into an Ulta to swatch some shades, some, some shades? to swatch some shades on the back of my hand. So I grabbed one of the concealers that I already used from a different brand so I could compare the two and none of the fair shades had pink undertones. All of them were yellow. So it's like all brands, not all of them. Some of them do good, some of them do fine, but a lot of brands need to just like work harder. So unfortunately I'm not gonna buy that Too Faced concealer, but I wanted to. I just don't, they just don't have a shade for me. And one thing that I saw actually from Bite Beauty, which I was surprised at, was stupid fucking gimmick. This Zodiac thing that they're doing where they release a different lipstick for each Zodiac sign during that Zodiac sign, which by itself, not the worst idea, but the problem is that once that zodiac sign moves on to the next one in the calendar, the lipstick is no longer available. Stop it. Like right now, they have Virgo. Why only have Virgo lipstick available during the Virgo season? What if that shade isn't your shade? Why would you bring out a color and then take it away and then bring out another color and take it away? Who knows if they're gonna like all the shades? It's, it's simply a marketing gimmick and I'm not gonna fucking spend my money on it. A, because my sign has passed and they don't have it anymore. I'm like, really? Really? Anyway. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about from Sephora specifically. As you all know, uh, our dearly departed, I'm being totally facetious, uh, Urban Decay Naked One is being discontinued. And it's on sale at Sephora right now for $24. Now, I used to own this palette. I really did. I owned it for several years and I used it when I first got it. It was like the first high-end palette I ever had. My dog ended up chewing it up and the mirror top of it came, came completely off and so I had it just like in a drawer for a while, just open without a lid. And I eventually threw it away. Would I go repurchase it? No, absolutely not. Because the thing is that palette came out seven years ago. There's been so many new palettes that have come out, so many new formulas, so much strides in formulations of eyeshadows and just like innovation in makeup. I, I see why they're discontinuing it because people aren't buying it anymore. Who knows? But I also think they're gonna bring it back with some like extra ass packaging and just like do it as a marketing ploy. Then I'm also not going to buy it. So specifically right now, I'm not gonna buy it and you shouldn't buy it because were you going to use it before? If you never thought to buy this eyeshadow palette in the last seven years of it being out, don't buy it now just because it's half off. Because it's just gonna be clutter sitting around and if it's some reason where you're like, oh, I wanna collect it, I wanna have it, it's iconic. You do you, but like, are you gonna use it? No. It has two matte shades, two matte shades in a 12 pan eyeshadow palette. If you really want it and like maybe you've always kind of wanted it, but you just never took the plunge because you got distracted by new releases, maybe take the time to do it now. But if it's something where you're just like, I just want it because it's on sale, you don't need it. You don't need it. I don't need it. I'm not gonna buy it. I didn't use it that much when I had it. And uh, the next chapter of this video, Influencer collab brands. I'm sure everybody has heard about the fuckery that has gone on with the now being deemed irrelevant four, which is hilarious to me. Like I am not gonna lie, I kind of watched Laura Lee's Social Blade for like a day on and off. I would just like click me like, how many subscribers is she losing now? And I, I feel like a bad person sometimes for just like rejoicing in people's demise. But like sometimes people like they, they done goofed. So after that all happened, I watched Gabriel Zamora's video, which I talked about briefly on Twitter. If you follow me on Twitter, I'm generally the most chatty as far as like instantaneous things. Follow me on Twitter, please do. I watched Gabriel's video and I appreciated it and I found it very sincere. I believed most of what he said and uh, I was like, okay, give this kid some 
some slack. So as well as all those revelations, I was never the biggest fan of Manny and Laura Lee in the beginning anyway. <laughs> like I didn't really enjoy their content. I thought they were way over the top. I thought that there was just some sense of inauthenticity to them that rubbed me the wrong way. And now after hearing people's truths, uh, it, it makes so much more sense why I didn't think they were real because they some fake ass bitches. Because of that, just putting it out there, I am never going to buy anything from Lunar Beauty or Laura Lee Los Angeles. Besides the fact that I feel like that they're boring, like they're just kind of derivative of each other and it's just the That is a situation where I am choosing to not spend money on a person that I don't support. And I feel like in this instance that this is somewhere where I literally cannot support the product from the person because it is a, a, a influencer owned brand with either their name on it or their likeness or like they specifically launched it. It would be like Makeup Geek and Marlena or Kat Von D and Kat Von D or Jeffree Star and Jeffree Star Cosmetics or Kylie Cosmetics and Kylie fucking Jenner. It's a name attached to a brand and I don't wanna support those people so I'm not going to spend money on their brand. I don't see that changing anytime soon just cause I don't know, like they're not that special. I don't know, I feel like that in this instance, this is where I want to kind of focus on these smaller brands, collabs with smaller YouTubers because it's, I feel more connected to them and it's a bit more authentic and it's a bit more relatable and not saying that big influencers can't be relatable, but like sometimes they can't. And I appreciate when brands take the time to work with influencers that are more niche and that are maybe not as big as some other people. And I, I, I like that. And so on top of Laura Lee and Manny MUA, just Morphe, Jaclyn Hill, that whole bullshit thing. It's just like, I'm so sick of brands plopping influencers names on their products because it doesn't usually make it any better. Look at the vault collection with Jaclyn Hill, for instance, those eyeshadows were shit. Clearly it doesn't make a product better when a name is attached to it that has millions of subscribers. So I don't feel the need to buy anything from any brand that they've just slapped an influencer name on. Literally just a marketing ploy. It's just a marketing ploy. Not digging it, not feeling it, not gonna spend my money on it, not gonna buy it. Don't need it and neither do you. And then the last part of this video, the last part um, is kind of just more broadly about sales and about the Sephora VIB thing in general. Um, I don't have any more specific products to talk about, but just sales in general. So coming from working at Lush, where I got a very generous discount, I will let you know it was a 50% discount. I miss it very much. Lush never lost money on salespeople shopping there but they didn't actually make any money on us. But they let us have the discount because they knew that we needed to know how to use the products to be able to sell it efficiently to the customers. So working at Lush kind of gave me a better perspective on how much brands hike up prices. But looking at brands that maybe have things on sale all the time, Urban Decay being one of them, Sephora brand specifically has stuff on sale all the time. Brands aren't going to put things on sale to where they lose money. So it makes you think that like if a brand has a sale all the time, how much are they hiking up the prices of something originally to make up for those sales? Like that's the reason why Lush didn't have sales because they didn't wanna have to hike up the prices so much to make up for that. You realize that like when a brand has a sale, you might be saving money but you're in a sense spending more on the original price anyway to make up for that. Like, does that make sense? And so while I fully support spending money on things during a sale, if it's something that you were already gonna buy anyway, like foundation and that you were running out of, buy it when it's on sale. But if it's something that you were gonna buy anyway, like buy it when it's 15% off or 20% off, I'm fully in favor of that because get get your discounts when you can. Especially at Sephora where they only give like discount appreciation events like twice a year. It's like, wow, you're so appreciative with your like fucking tiny little ass samples. Like Ulta has a much better rewards program, just saying. It, it sometimes works in the opposite way that you want it to where you'll see a product that maybe you haven't gotten the gumption to purchase because it's too expensive. And then when you see it's on sale, you'll go and buy it. And then you'll do that for another product and another product and like three more products. And quickly you will have spent far more money during a sale than you would have if you were just going to Sephora on a regular day, which if you have money to do that by all means, but if you're somebody 
somebody that's like trying to like budget yourself, don't splurge so much during a sale because it's a sale. If you weren't gonna buy something when it was full priced, don't necessarily buy it when it's on sale. Unless it's something that it, you're literally never gonna have to restock, a perfume or maybe like an eyeshadow palette, but something that you will have to restock regularly like skincare and say you buy it at 20% off. And if you like it to the point where you wanna repurchase it, but then when you go to repurchase it, it's no longer on sale, you either don't buy it because you feel guilty or you do buy it and then you feel guilty. Like, do you know what I mean? Like. It's a weird dichotomy of like spending money while something's on sale and then having to repurchase it when it's not on sale. Because if, if you would never buy something at full price, don't necessarily buy it just because it's on sale. It's a marketing tactic that brands use to get people to buy more products. Sephora makes so much money during these two weeks. Like they make, they make so much bank during the sale event because of stuff like this, where people are going in and spending way more money than maybe they should, or they're spending way more money on things that maybe they weren't gonna buy if they weren't on sale, but because they're on sale, fucking buy that shit. Like you don't have to give into that. Like you don't have to spend $300 on so many products just because you get a 20% off coupon. So in conclusion to this last segment, don't feel like you need to spend money that you don't have just because something's on sale. I hope that made sense. And I hope that this like kind of broken up, chunked up, <laughs> chunked up, it's a terrible word. Anti-haul made sense. I just wanted to kind of get multiple thoughts out without having to record like multiple videos because I feel like they all kind of fit into the same category where it's just like spend money on things that you, that will that will literally make your life better. Spend money on things that, that are special and that you really, really want, not just on things because they're on sale. <laughs> like <laughs> you don't have to do that. For today's song of the day, it is Retreat by Cumulus. And I'm actually working on their episode of Band in Seattle right now. I'm very excited about it. I love Cumulus. I've known Alex for years and they're actually on tour right now. So I'll put a link to the uh, West Coast tour. I think they're, they might be going elsewhere, but I'll put a link to the tour down below so you can go see them if you are elsewhere. So yeah, Retreat, it's a pop song about consent. Hell yeah. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, that would be lovely. And then hit the notification bell to get notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know if you enjoyed this video because uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, see you guys in my next one, bye.